jokes. Warning, the Catholic Man Show contains high levels of manliness. It's simple, really. You either want to grow in virtue and holiness, or you want to be a sissy, whiny baby. If you choose to move forward, grab your whiskey glass, because the Catholic Man Show is starting right now. Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Adam Minahan here sitting with David Niles. This is possibly the last episode here in the, the studio. Yes, we may have said that last episode, but but I think the more times we say it, <laughs> the, the, the more, closer it the is closer to being it is. true. <laughs> yeah, this could be it though. If someone comes along and snatches up this house, then it it be gone. It's gonna it's gonna be the last episode. Yeah. So we have to say it. We have to keep saying it because it yeah. will be true very soon. It will be true. Yeah. Um, Dave, it's 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 good to be here. Like it's good to to take a minute. It is like, good that we are here. It's good that we are here together for such a time. This as week this. is this <laughs> is one of my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful like line you know uh from the bible um but i just think it's a funny funny line to say for such a time as, as this, this. <laughs> and i don't even know why i think it's so funny from the book of esther but such a time as this for such a time as this <laughs> like you can just kind of say it Anytime, <laughs> like, no matter what you're doing or what you're talking or about, the, or the experience you're, you're, it just kind of always, it always seems to fit. Like, which I, I don't know. Sorry, I think it's funny. Yeah. Um. Well, let, we'll get into the drink and then we can talk about th- this crazy week. Okay. So, um, we are drinking. Let me get it pulled back up because I've looked up like, oh, I want to make sure I say this the right way several Balamach. times. Yeah. Balamach. Yeah. Or Balamic. Balmen, Balm, Balmenic. It's 200 years. It's two, but they're 200 years old. They were started in 1824 in Scotland. So it's a Spay side. It's right because it's situated next to the River Spay. Huh. Um, we were is reading. This, is this where the Jacobites got the, defeated? It, it is the same. Uh, according to the Wikipedia, anyway. No kidding. Um, situated in the district of, of Cromdale on the banks of the River Spey, the distillery stands in beneath the nearby hill of Tom Lethendry, where the Jacobites were defeated in the Battle of Cromdale in 1690. Take that, Jacobites. Also, like, what's up with that? It's on the River Spey. The distillery stands in beneath... Beneath is not capitalized. I think it's just like, it's just, you know, the Scottish know. way of saying it, maybe. I don't know. So it's called Zingy and Lip Smackingly Tasty from the uh, uh, Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Society. And I, I do have the notes here if you'd like to hear them. Uh, can we, can, I'd like to try it. Go ahead. You try it. Okay. I'm going to try it, too. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers. Yeah. Because it smells oh. delicious. It is so good. Okay, tell me what the nose Wow. So the nose wafted floral chamomile tea and lemon peel with various berries. Uh, pottery straight from the kiln, perfume on a woolly ju- on a really perfume on a woolly jumper, and something of an ap- apothecary's shop. The palate had black currant and cranberry juiciness and tart zesty lemonade, velvety caramel and condensed milk, some herbal hints, and a dry finish of ginger, chili, and charred oak. Additional indulgences on the the reduced nose included toast and almond croissant, peanut shells, licorice, and Ricola Swiss herbal sweets. I need to get some of those sweets. Uh, The palate now suggests berry, nuts, twigs, orange blossoms, with a touch of leather on the finish, Altogether zingy and lip-smackingly tasty. Mm. I will tell you, 
it is lip smackingly tasty. Mm-hmm. So this is um, one of the Ooh, yeah, most nice. affordable bottles from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Okay. So this one's ninety five dollars. Nice. Which it's an eight year. It's an eight year, space yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really really good. Once again, everything from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society tends to just tends be, to be awesome. They should sponsor our show. Please. I would love for them to send us money. Yes. Since, or, or free whiskey. Since I'm sending them so much of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, you know, there's uh, spots in your house where you have created chaos or disorder um, of some sort. Yeah. It's usually the bathroom. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> on a roll tonight um and it's like something that you're like oh yeah i'm gonna get to that and fix that uh-huh. sometime sure it's like especially like when you first move in you start doing all these things you're like oh yeah well oh, yeah. I'll, I'll worry about that in a little bit there's a long list of those so like when you yeah. buy the house you're right. like oh but i'm gonna fix i'm gonna do that and that i, and had, it's to, like, I had to fix something but i didn't have time to actually put it back together so i'm just gonna like i'm gonna yeah. wait well i did that uh when we first moved in here we had a little bitty like, leak like 10, like, 10 years, years ago. ago 10 years ago we had a little bitty uh, leak, and we could tell the sheetrock was starting to get wet. And so I was like, oh, I'm just going to cut the sheetrock out. I'm going to fix the pipe. Put the sheetrock Like a on. man. Yeah, do great. Gosh. And it's going to be awesome. Honey, come here and look. Gonna, Watch me. I'm going to show my wife how, like, I saved us $200. Right. Didn't call no plumber. Yeah. I mean, it may have cost me 400 Right. <laughs> but, uh, no. So I, I, but I spent that money on my terms. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I fixed the leak. Never fixed the sheetrock. Just, Dude, sheetrock is ridiculous. It, it's just so, yeah. It if is. If it's not textured, it's easy. Yeah. Like uh, if you like, sometimes in a formal dining room, there'll be no texture on the wall or something. Uh, I've done a patch on a on drywall that had no texture, and when it was done, you just couldn't tell because mm-hmm. you can just sand it and sand it until it's smooth. But we, matching texture is it's just impossible. Right. So since we since we moved in, basically after three weeks mm-hmm. we have had a hole in our clo- in our master bedroom closet yeah. and i was just like hey i don't need it I'm, I'm not worried about that right i'll fix that someday yeah uh and well someday has ha- had arrived and so i realized it snuck up on you it snuck up on me this 10 years it was years. mugged by someday <laughs> yeah and so i was like okay i gotta get this done so i started cutting it you know cutting out a little bit more sheetrock to give me room to put it back up because one thing about sheetrock is that I've learned is it's much easier to just cut out a little bit bigger of a piece, mm-hmm. you know, to than the hole or whatever the, you know, um, you got to get to the studs at least. Right. On each. So I am like trying to get this big piece of sheetrock up there on the ceiling by myself. It's very awkward angled, you know, to get up there. It's in my closet. So I have sh- closet shelves and stuff that I'm having to work around. I'm mm-hmm. just banging the, the crap out of these walls, you know, yeah. with a sheetrock and it's just, it's just not going well. And finally get it up there, and then it doesn't fit quite right. Bring it back down, cut it a little bit more, get the you know, try to get the hole for the light, you know, so it fits the, up like in the there. Light fixture, the light yeah. fixture. And I'm like, I'm getting it up there, and as I'm getting it up there, like I'm finally about there. This is, mind you, like six hours in because mm. I spent three hours prepping everything. Went to bed. My dog uh, overnight took all the prep work down and just like the like, plastic, all sheeting. the plastic sheets, all the everything that we did. Like she just. Yeah, messed it up. So then I had to redo that. And then, like, you know, I'm fidgeting with this big piece. And it's like, you know, every time you, you finally get it up there and you realize I'm a quarter of an inch off or, like, you know, yeah. an a, you know, eighth of an inch off here. So you have to get it back down. You have to get it back outside. You know, it's just like this whole process. And I'm finally about there. And I'm, like, pushing it up. And right down the middle, cracks and breaks open. Sweet. And I am doing my best not to lose my salvation, mm-hmm. you know, during this process, because I feel like that I am, I'm going, I'm going to curse. I'm going you know, to light, <laughs> light this closet on fire. Yeah, this is not good. And I am like very, I am very frustrated. I don't get frustrated too much, too often, like in projects or things like that. Like I, I'm a pretty chill guy, you know, yeah. for that that part. But yeah. I am, I have almost at the brink lost it. And so I walk outside and I sit down and I I have a beer like in my hand and I open it up and I'm like, Lord, I know that I'm supposed to be giving this to you. I don't want, like, I am so mad right now. Um, and as soon as I'm like thinking about this, uh, my, my phone buzzes and I look at it and it's a guy who we've, who's been to the camp out before. His name is Brian. Um, 
and he had texted me randomly. And he said, hey, bro, uh, I just want to let you know I've really been thinking about you, and I prayed for you tonight. I hope all is well, even if you're struggling. And I was like, I hadn't talked to the guy since, like, the camp out four years ago. Uh-huh. And out of the blue, he, he texted me. Awesome. And I was like, okay, Lord, I get it. You know, like, all right. And so I, like, try to – I calm down. I tell him, like, dude, I can't believe you did that. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Uh, that was just really great timing. And so then I call you out, or text you or, or something, and I was like, hey, man, I just need you to come over, you know, and, like, help me out. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, you'll be there tomorrow. I'm like, great. So you come over tomorrow. And, like, we started doing it. We get it up pretty quick. Like, Still wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Yeah. But we got it up pretty quick. Yeah. Um, And I just remember, like, I just thought, like, you know, this is something, like, I just really needed support. Like, I just needed somebody else there, which is so weird. Holding like, up a ceiling is difficult to do by yourself and then... And then still trying... It, it just admittedly is a two-person job. Yeah. So, anyway, it was just, like, really cool to see how friends, are obviously, in proximity and not in proximity, yeah. like, came to my aid during the, a time that I really, like, was struggling um, and how the Lord gave me that blessing. You know. Very cool. So it was really, really cool. And you did, we, you did finish the project. Did finish the project. Looks great. Mm-hmm. Haley actually uh, textured the. Uh, she all did the, all the corners and okay. stuff. Yeah, did great. Looks great. Wow. So send her over to my house. No. All right. <laughs> we have too many things to do right now. All right, fine. <laughs> okay, well, in a couple months, send her over to my house. <laughs> Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, how to prevent, uh, how the devil prevents us from increasing in our spiritual life. Mm. Right back. I hate that guy. Was it Creekmore? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing well, but it was just like so. He did he is he did he join the church? I don't know if he has or not. Because I know he was like really thinking about it. I and yeah. I, I don't ever get on Facebook anymore, so I, I yeah. don't know if he actually ever did. I don't know either. I hope he did. Well, yeah, I pray he did. He's a great guy. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan. We're drinking a little zingy and lip tastingly. Lip smackingly tasty. Product of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, not sponsored by the show. Yet. Yet. If anybody knows who those guys are over there, should give them our Tag phone em. number or something. Yeah. Hook a brother up. Yeah. Because I don't know, this is probably like our tenth bottle we've had on the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> Add up the <laughs> matting that up in my head. That's what's like a lot of money, but anyway. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna be uh, harvesting some wheat soon. Oh yeah, your winter wheat is coming. The is winter, finished? the winter wheat. Why are you saying it that way? Why am I saying what? What way? So is, yeah, it, it, it's it's dying. You know, so you got to let the wheat die. Right. Unless a grain, grain of wheat shall fall upon the ground. Yeah, it has to die first. Yeah. Um. So I'll be doing that soon. That'll be exciting. I I, I uh, ordered. Did it come all the way through your your pasture part, or is it still that one side? Well, I planted wheat in the pasture as a cover crop for the cows, but they 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 ate that up right away. Mm-hmm. They said like, "I like this." Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so the, I just did my little food plot area, which is thirty five feet by thirty feet. Mm-hmm. So it's a small. It's really a pretty small area. Mm-hmm. I have no idea if this is true. Okay, but according but let's say it on the but on according the to some math. Could be wrong, but all the same, it might be enough wheat, enough flour, because I'm going to turn it all into flour, to bake two loaves of bread a week, week for a year. We'll see. According according to some YouTube people, that they gave specific dimensions about how much wheat they grew, and I just multiplied that by my well, the size. Thing is, is most YouTubers don't lie, so no, they never lie. You. That's the thing. Yeah, they never do. You got that going about for YouTube, you. yeah, or the internet. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. I'll let you know. 
So did it come all the way, like, even the... Yeah, spots. yeah. So there was some like some parts of the little food plot that didn't grow nearly as well, mm-hmm. and the same thing happened with the corn. There, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe like the soils were too sandy over there. I, I have no idea. I've tried to like till it up back and forth all over so that it gets mixed up really mm-hmm. well. So I I don't know what the deal is, but yes, it did fruit. Um, it's not as tall, so I the you know like it doesn't have like thirty grains mm-hmm. on the whatever you call that for wheat i don't know mm-hmm. actually the terminology for wheat but um so yes it is it did produce wheat berries it's not as many as the part that grew better okay which is not surprising right okay but anyway i got a sweet sickle or a mm-hmm. scythe mm-hmm. gosh i can't remember which one is which one is like you know that the grim reaper that's like a big thing that you'd swing mm-hmm Maybe that's a scythe. It's a scythe. Okay. Yeah. So I have a sickle. Got it. And it's like super Braces. sharp. Okay. I'm really excited to use it. Sweet. Yeah. Hope I don't cut myself. <laughs> oh, you're going to cut yourself. I mean, if history we'll has, see. if history repeats itself with you and sharp things, no, you're gonna that's cut. not true. Look, you're, just you're because cut one time when I was four or five or six, I don't remember how old we were. How old do you think we were? Um, Eight or nine. Okay, fine. One time when we were eight or nine. It was like three times, but that's fine. It wasn't. It was just one time. With the whittling chip? No, I lost my whittling chip for... It was once because I cut myself when you were there. Weirdly enough, on purpose. And then, <laughs> like, check this out. Look how sharp it is. Like, oh, Running it over your finger. my thumb. <laughs> it's bleeding. The other time was just because I broke some of the other rules. Yeah, uh, you cut a window screen. That was a different. That wasn't it. That, I did oh. that. I did cut the window screens. <laughs> You're dead. Can you imagine as so, a dad? Like, I just think about if my son, because <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it to just one. I did it to a couple of them. Yeah. But I, I, dude, I still to this day remember doing this and th- like How feeling satisfying. the, yeah, like feeling, you go like, in like, sort of like, click, 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 you know, as it was cutting the screen, it was right. like, wow, that's awesome. That's so good. <laughs> and I cut an X. <laughs> <laughs> these window screens. Can you imagine? You know what? Like, I don't even remember like getting in. Like, I know I remember like sort of getting in trouble, but like just getting kind of yelled at. That's it, dude. I, I couldn't imagine like coming home from work on a hard hard day. Like it's been a rough day. You walk in, kids are screaming. You know, your wife is, you know, to the max, like on, on edge. You know, because she, she's been dealing with the kids. You walk out to the you like, let me just you give me a second. You walk out to the backyard. You you open a beer. You look over. <laughs> X's huge X's cut in <laughs> on your a big screens. X in each your windows. You know I kind of have my suspicions that there may have been a debate between my parents about whether I was old enough for a a pocket knife, and I kind of think my mom was on the no side and my dad was on the so then like, he, what was he gonna do? Like right. he couldn't even really get on to me because. Dude, you shouldn't have had one. Right. <laughs> he was like, my mom's probably over there going like, see? Yeah. All right. It's my bad. You know? That's the only explanation. I haven't asked. I should ask him. Yeah, you should definitely See if they him. remember. Yeah. That was, del- that was delicious. But losing my whittling chip later in life was just for, it wasn't because I was cutting myself, except for the once. <laughs> Dude, being your friend, like, had paid so many, like, it was, it was so joyful still does still is uh throughout throughout our, our, our childhood <laughs> there's so many things like i'd be like oh what I, I, I wonder what would happen if i did that i don't need to know hey dave hey why don't you try this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay also <laughs> what if we do it on a bike yeah <laughs> oh man okay so uh hey today we're going to talk about how the devil prevents our spiritual advancement uh the, Ending the month of May with uh, the Our Lady crushing the head of the serpent. So, just so we're clear, you decided not to continue with the rosary. The yeah. rosary. Well, we it, had said that last time. And yeah. Um, you know what? I was just in prayer and very this good. Is what, yeah. This is what uh, we didn't sign a contract with anybody. Right. Um, hey, you want you want to do that? I mean, start your own podcast. You know, like <laughs> sometimes we change our mind. Yeah. Um, just so we're just get that out of the way right so uh, i'm pulling from we, we've we've talked about this book before 
but it's been a long time, but it's called The Spiritual Doctrine of Father Louis Lalement. Lalement? Lalement? Very funny last name. Um, it's not in, in, in print anymore, but you can, if you try to find it uh, you know, on, online, if you find it, I highly recommend getting it. It's just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, all about the spiritual life. And uh, he goes through there. So this is, I'm pulling, you know, from him and wanting to get kind of your thoughts and feedback and kind of like just talk about it, obviously. But he talks about how the devil deceives many by uh, means of some trouble, some frustration, annoyance, scruples, or other disp- evil dispositions, right? Mm-hmm. So he's, he's constantly trying to uh, fill your mind with evil. Right, well, and it's tailor made. He, you know, th- he will tailor make it for you. He knows mm-hmm. what your temperament is, right? And then what, what the things that have been, su- what the things he's been successful with in the past for you, mm-hmm. right? And he's gonna, well, yeah, th- continue to push those buttons. That's what's interesting is Father Father Luis says uh, that when the deception works, he quickly moves on to the next thing, which, in my mind, at first when I read that, I was like, no, surely he like just keeps nitpicking at that that thing right Mm -hmm. but that makes total sense that he moves on very quickly to the next thing because he actually doesn't want you to think that oh this is somewhere like i'm falling into this trap Mm -hmm. he wants it to be very very gradual very very slow right and and less like very conspicuous like very not obvious at all and it's never enough just to go one step with him He's always going to want you to take, okay, now take the next step and the right. next step, right? So right. it's for him, it's not enough that you just did it something one time. Um, and, you know, the same principle is true also of our of the good angels who surround us. You know, they also want to encourage us to also keep taking one more step, one more step, because we've said this before, you know, this is a well-known thing. You're never standing still in your spiritual life. Right. You're, you're pro- progressing or regressing. Right, exactly. So there is no such thing as just, like, chilling. Um, so in, in, in many ways, if you're not progressing, that means you are regressing, right? right. If you're not continuing that walk with the Lord, because mm-hmm. it is a journey. Mm-hmm. And if you stop, now that now well, all you're doing is creating distance between you and Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're supposed to be on the journey. Right. Yeah, so he, he says that uh, the devil can use basically seven things. Now, this isn't uh, an exhaustive list, but this is the things that he highlights, right? Okay. So he talks about uh, how the devil can use past experiences, the news we hear, objects that strike our senses, our humor and passions, useless thoughts and reflections, vain desires and fears, or with other uh, some other movement of an unmortified passion. Mm-hmm. So I, I found these very, like very striking. You know, obviously past experiences. This is the such importance of you know not breaking the sixth or ninth commandment. You know, because the more that you, uh, you know, struggle with those sins, the more the Lord, uh, the, the more the devil can can use that against you. Right. right. Yeah. Um, the more you fill your imagination with filth, mm-hmm. the more he can he can right bring yes. that back to you. Yeah. Look, for instance, looking at pornography once is not just one something you did one time. Because now you have the memory mm-hmm. of it, which those they can recall those images into your into your intellect, mm-hmm. present them to you again. They can. It's one thing that they, they can do is they can use your memory against you, right? And uh, and memory is a virtue, right? Right. And we have talked about the 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 grace of forgetfulness. Yes. On the podcast before through uh, our lady asking our lady. Right. Um, and the other one, like the news we hear, man, how much does he play? Play in this, right? Okay. I think uh, past generations really got caught up in the news a lot, like always wanting to know about what, what's going on in the world, what's going on in the world. And the more, the, the older that I've gotten, I've realized, like, I don't think that actually matters too much. I don't care at all about it. Like, I, I care about like what's going on politically and like around me in, the, in my community. Yeah, my friends will tell me something's happening. That's kind of the way it works. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. Eighth year of the Catholic Man Show. The year of eternity. We were uh, in our 20s when we started 
the Catholic Man Show. You're almost 50 now. <laughs> well, that math doesn't add up. Hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, you not, can. not the first time on this episode I may have done bad math. Who knows? <laughs> uh, like we mentioned, though, that we are going to be uh, creating a new studio here in the future. So if you could support our show, that would be would be very gracious, especially right now as we are in the process of doing that or starting that process. Please. Patreon.com yeah. slash The Catholic Man Show. That would be very, very helpful. Can uh, you make a one-time donation? You can, yes. So that would, even if you don't want to, like, be a monthly thing, but you want to make a one-time donation. That would be very helpful. We would really, I mean, it really, we do have some larger than normal expenses coming up. So, it'd be great. Uh, we also, like, you, you get a lot of thank you. Like, I don't know another podcast that gives as many thank you gifts as we do, uh, especially right off the bat, because mm-hmm. we actually lose money most of the time uh, when patron signs up. Now, it may take us a little bit to get, like, to get it shipped to you, right? Uh, that just happens, but... It's not because we're waiting. It's just because we're slow. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, before the break, we were talking about how, uh, the ways that the devil can use um, different things to uh, prevent our growth in their spiritual life. And we're well, talking about the news that we hear. That's one of the things. Yes. Yeah. The news is, I mean, the, it, there's just, this is true not only of like secular news, but even Catholic news, okay? Even if you think, all right, well, I just keep myself to the Catholic world, you know, and I don't worry about Mm -hmm. other things. A lot of times, even the Catholic news, the current events, you know, it's, it tends to just be scandals or, you know, oh, here's some, here's the drama of the Catholic world or, you know, of the world. Um, And the news outlets these days have no intent or desire to keep you informed. They want to keep you. That's what they want Mm -hmm. because that's how they make money. Right. Right. Um, I am constantly reminding my clients about the news that remember the news, they make money by selling ads. We always have to keep that in mind that what is their business model? They, they sell ads, the ads, the value that they can sell those ads for is solely dependent on how many people are watching. So they want to like, just suck you in. Mm -hmm. They don't actually care. They're not like altruistic. They're not trying to provide you like some, great service just because they want you to be a well-informed person you know um so it's it's important to keep that in mind Mm -hmm. when we well especially if it's losing your peace like because this i think this is how he he uses the news right he he like you watch the news it lose you lose your peace through watching the news and that's where he can really thrive right and you like get riled up about it about something that just doesn't matter doesn't even really affect your life Right. You know, the one here that sticks out to me was when he says our humor and our passions. Mm-hmm. I, when, um, screw tape letters is what came to my mind. You know, after college, when you and I, you know, both started taking our faith more seriously, I've always been a funny guy, right? That's like, people know me as a funny guy. Yeah. And looks aren't everything. Looks are not everything. Right. And so, uh, it's re- really hard for me in life. But, I remember taking my faith serious more, you know, like this becoming a bigger part of my life and having a moment where I realized I'm going to have to let go of a lot of the, like what I, what I viewed as a, a very important part of me, mm-hmm. you know, this was yeah. like who I am. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was going to have to like stop being me, this person that I, that I had always been because I realized, look, the jokes that I'm telling, they're just not, they're not holy. They're not, Mm -hmm. they're not bringing other people to Christ. They're taking me away. You know, like the things I'm saying, some of them were very inappropriate. Mm -hmm. You know, they were objectively funny, Mm -hmm. you know, but, um, not good. Mm -hmm. And so I had to confront that in my life. And as it turns out, like I didn't have to give up that that part of me. This is just a great testament of what the Lord does. He doesn't, he, he transforms you, mm-hmm. right? He made you that way. Mm-hmm. He made you to be this way. And um, I, you know, like society, my own sinful choices in life had kind of taken and twisted um, the gift of humor mm-hmm. in me. And it was only like when I came back to the faith, I realized like, oh, I actually, the the devil was saying, "Oh, if you, this is what he was telling me, if you if you follow him, you won't get to be 
funny anymore, right? You won't get to, right. you won't get the attention. Nobody's gonna think this about you anymore, mm -hmm. right? You know, like you're gonna have to be a boring, you know, is a very, is it- Like an Adam or something. Right, yeah. I mean, except just not handsome. <laughs> um, so it was a, it really was a, I don't know if I would almost say scary. That's a little bit overplaying the cards, but um, it was a, a difficult thing for me to accept. And once again, just like so many other times, like once I accepted it, it turned out to be totally fine. Yeah. That's the way Jesus always works. It's like, hey, this may seem scary. I know stepping out of the boat onto the water is freaky, but once you do it, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Because I got you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, the other one, there's two others that really stood out to me. One being, uh, or with some other movement of an unmortified passion. Mm hmm. And to me, that really, you know, you, you stop and think it's like, well, because that's probably something that I, I like, but I feel like I have under control. Like that doesn't mm -hmm. like uh, red flags. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Red flag, red flag. That's but, what you think. Because I know I have I have some of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, oh, this one's not a problem for me. Yeah. But I can do, a, you know, uh, I can eat. I can eat snacks. That's no problem. Food's not a problem for right. me. Um, yeah. For me, it's like media consumption. You know, it's like, yeah, oh, I'm gonna just get on YouTube because I need to watch, look something up, and then like next thing you know, I'm like sitting there scrolling through shorts, mm -hmm. wasting my life, mm -hmm. and like, you know, then reflect on it's like, yeah, where some of these videos, like, this isn't what I came looking for. Mm -hmm. I didn't want this, but it was presented to me, and it's like, oh, you know, and I kind of enjoy it, and you keep watching, and then like they tend to just get like worse and push <laughs> the envelope a little bit more and a little bit more before you, and like, I have. That still happens to me sometimes. You're like, you know, no, right? This is so frustrating. Yeah, it's it, it is frustrating. Uh, it, it, what does what does Screw Tape say? Like, when somebody goes down in heaven, he says, "I know, I, I I realize I did not do the things that I loved, nor the things that I ought." You know, but that you just did things, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is which is terrible. It's like lukewarm, right? It's like the worst. Right, at least choose to do something. Um, to me, whenever I think about myself doing that, it's like I'm just totally an animal. I have lost my humanity mm -hmm. because I'm not. I have like I've give I've surrendered my even my free will to this passion of mine to these YouTube videos. Right, I don't even know. I'm just going. Right, <laughs> you know, you know, like I'm no longer. Oh, dude, I, no uh, yeah. longer making human choices. I'm I'm a I, slave. I, I'm I am guilty of it as well. Yeah, so. One thing, so at risk of going down a rabbit hole, but hey, it's our podcast. We can do that if we want, I guess. And it's not like we've never done that before on the Catholic Man Show. I am interested in your thoughts on fear. You know, <clears throat> I have had fears. Um, I don't have a lot of fear in my life. Just because I'm so brave. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that has, uh, I mean, I, I've told this story before too, but there was one time when we started the show and we were getting the radio station going where I was, um, you know, young in my career and I really felt like I was, a. I didn't feel like it. I was afraid that the Lord was going to call me to full-time ministry, ask me to quit my job. I didn't want to do that. I really like my job. I have a good job. Um, and I was like something I was afraid to even pray about. I would kind of like feel it coming up and he was like, no, let's talk about something else. <laughs> And then finally, one day in adoration, I was like, you know what, Jesus? The thing is, I'm kind of afraid about this. And I'm afraid that you're going to ask me to, to do this, and I don't want to. And I remember telling him, like, but I, I trust you, and if that's what you what want. What a grace, by the way. If the, oh, it was, it was totally a grace. It was like a, absolutely a moment of intervention. Um, like, like, this was me. I'm just Peter drowning at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And Like, Christ is yanking me out. He gave me the grace to say these things to him, mm -hmm. where I said, I trust you, and if that's what you want, I'll do it. I don't want to. I want you to know I don't want to, right. but I will, and I'll be pissed about it, <laughs> but I'll do it. And then instantly went away. Like that moment, uh, it was and it was just something very clearly I realized the Lord just wanted to, me to surrender it hmm. to him. That fear, and it was... Um, Clearly, when I look back, the devil was using fear to try to get in the way of the Catholic radio ministry that, that you and I have, you know, been working at for so long now. 
Mm-hmm. Um, this is you know, at the beginning. And so, yes, fear absolutely can and does play a, can be a huge barrier. Um, and sometimes it's for little things. Sometimes it's for big things. Um, you know, like when it comes to being a witness, maybe in the workplace, mm-hmm. a lot of fear there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, is that inappropriate? For, in, you know, was does society to say this is inappropriate for me to um, talk mm-hmm. about my faith in the workplace? Um, is somebody Wait, is somebody going to be offended? Do, do you think that fear can ever be used as a positive? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, fear. And, and in fact, it should be. There should be positive elements to fear. Um, and, you know, there there should be cultural consequences. And um, the, the healthier the culture the the better these consequences are right um like you know uh you go, you go back many many decades uh, the idea of divorce there's a lot of fear about you know because well shame there's yeah no shame. yeah well and you're afraid of like what's what are people going to say about me shame. yeah yeah um and there were there were good elements to that you know yeah i think that you know obviously everybody deals with fear in different ways i find that when I have fear. I do get uh, anxious about it. Some, you know, I get anxious. Sure. But I also have found that fear has bre- like breeds a lot of creativity for me. Huh? Because it's like, okay, this is a problem. How am I gonna get myself out of this? How am I gonna get out of this? Yeah. And like, it, it creates things that I would not think about otherwise. Huh? Like it's very clear. Like as I've reflected on this, the times that I have been afraid of certain things mm-hmm. has caused me to do taking leaps that there's no way I would have done this without without this fear. There's no way I would have taken this step next. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of any examples like that for me. Once again, I'm just very brave. Right. I'm like you're very fortuitous. Like honestly, I'm like super brave. What is this? I don't know. I can't read that far, dude. Windows it installer. Matter. It doesn't matter. I don't want to say okay. What if it? I'm gonna just don't X. touch anything. You don't. Good don't, idea. Yeah. Just don't touch. Just good idea. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. David Niles here with Adam Minahan. We're talking about. How the devil prevents our spiritual advancement. I'll tell you, when we get a new studio, I would like to put in a request for new headphones. Dotes. These are like, look, clamp your head. Anyway, they do. I have a, I have a tiny head, yeah. and they hurt my, they hurt my ears. Yeah. So anyway, like before the break, we were talking about fear, just for like to kind of put a bow on this. Is like I, I have found, like I said, that in times of fear, I've had to. You know, there's anxiety. I I tend to uh, up my prayer prayer life even more. Um, you know what? That fear does make you pray. Nothing makes you pray like being afraid. And then, whether it's the fruit of prayer or you know whatever it is, it seems like I I have cre- like more creativity of ways in which to get myself out of the, out of the situation that's causing me fear, or ways to. Um, like help me move past the fear, like whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, which is very weird, I think. But again, I think everybody handles fear in different ways. I found that mine's anxiety and creativity. <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle fear? Uh, excellently. Yeah. <laughs> makes me holy. <laughs> yeah. um, also, it makes me very strong. So here, here's what he says. Here's what about, and a little bit hungry. And. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what Father Luis says about the the devil how the devil begil, begin, uh, deals with beginners. He says the devil deals with beginners, uh, uh, which the devil deals with beginners is either to prevent a good they do, or to diminish it, or to change it in some way to make it less good. Which is very interesting. Like so, how he starts out is he doesn't actually make you do something bad, mm-hmm. but he creates a disorder. He creates a disorder of like a, a good that you want to do and making it a less good, or like taking a lower good and make and you're desiring it to be a higher good. Yeah, this which is this is exactly what he does. In fact, I think fear is a good example. He will, the devil, and his demons will often start off by presenting 
small, maybe something, um, small fears that might be rational. Okay, like mm -hmm. oh, this is the thing that's normal to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's no shame in being afraid of this one thing. Mm -hmm. And try to get you to give in to your fear to something that is reasonable to be afraid of, but simply just presenting more opportunities for you to give in to your fear. Mm -hmm. And then slowly move the line, constantly move the goalposts, right. okay? So that in the beginning, you're not afraid of, you know, fill in the blank, right? right? But over time, he has trained you because you were giving in to the, to the promptings of the devil, right? Um, and over time, he will, you know, he's, it's the frog in the hot water, mm -hmm. the, the slow, easy decline, right? Hell, is, the road to hell is uh, just a, a, a very gentle, easy descent. Yeah, which I just found, uh, you know, again, I think this is just really good, great spiritual insight is, is that your initial gut reaction to, like, what does the devil do to, beginner, to beginners in this spiritual life? Well, oh, you, you just fill them up with a bunch of sin. You know, present them with the op opportunities to just, like, swing the other way hard mm -hmm. you know um, no it's very gentle yeah but it's just like no no, no. just tr get him to do a lesser good mm -hmm. at first right it's and that i mean that plays out so like it's played out it my can, life so it can many be times. something about like oh don't kneel while you pray right <laughs> right oh pray oh yeah definitely pray right. just why don't you sit down why don't you pray in bed why right. don't you um oh i mean oh you should definitely pray we want i want you to pray yeah but you don't have to kneel. Christ doesn't care if you kneel while you pray. The postures don't matter. He's all loving. He doesn't, he, right. he loves it's you just, just so the gradual. way you are. You know, sure. No, go make your coffee first. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's all all of these things. Yep. Go on. I know, because I hear all these voices every My morning, <laughs> every day. <laughs> so here's what he says uh, with those who are like more of a perfect soul, like, you know, those... Who are, who are very holy he says um to keep them in a state of uh, disturbance never leaving them any repose of the disturbance and having tired and and weary that they, they may um be and tired. having tired and weary and wearied them and wearied them he may at least turn them away if possible from the close application of god fill their hearts with sadness and discouragement and feeble and, and when they're feeble uh, in practice of good and leave them uh, leave them to relaxation and tepidity. So it goes back to again, how do we how do we you know bring somebody down? It's like just get them comfortable almost. Mm -hmm. You know, just wear them down. Slowly yeah, but, but this is surely. for the per the perfect soul. He's like really harassing them at a at a, like a much higher level. It's oh like, yeah, of course. Right in the beginning. Yeah, it's still, yeah, just kind of slow and easy. But it's like, all right, once you're attaining more perfection, slow and easy is not going to do it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I just got to, like, physically wear you out. You know, um, harass your your imagination constantly just to get you to the point where it's like you can't, like, wear out, just, like, just tired of fighting and fighting and fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, he talks about how, like, uh, ultimately he wants to cast souls into mortal sin, mm -hmm. right? And then when that doesn't work anymore, then what he does is he 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 tries to get you to, do, you know, to to commit venial sins, small, little venial sins, sure. over and over again, which makes your soul it disposes your your soul to a point where you are more apt to commit mortal sin, which I think we can all uh, relate to this in some some way sometime in their life right is that you've been struggling with the sin you've been doing great you know you haven't been yeah i, I haven't struggled with this sin in a long time mm -hmm. and then like over the course of a month or two months or whatever uh you slowly like there's just little parts of that that sin that kind of creep back in not the full thing but just like little parts it's mm -hmm. like oh well maybe you know maybe th this language this type of language or maybe you know th this type of movie or this type of music whatever it is and it like slowly kind of creeps back in, and then all of a sudden, one day you're like, "Wait, I haven't struggled with this sin in forever." Yeah. And like, how did this all of a sudden come, creep back into my life? Mm -hmm. I, and sure. this is the time that you, I think, you have to really kind of recollect. Like, well, we should do a, a very thorough examination of conscience here. Mm -hmm. Like, what and you is can happening? see, like, oh, yep, I did this. 
or you get to the point where it's like, oh, I'm not going to commit this sin, but you kind of just enjoy being tempted <laughs> by, by it, it right? right? It's like, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I'm right. definitely not going to do it. And that, and like that even might be true, mm-hmm. but you just like, oh, but you know, like just kind of enjoy the, the temptation of it. Like that is, you are in treacherous, treacherous waters. Yeah. And then he, and then what he does is he, he, he talks about how uh, the devil behaves like Pharaoh, right? So he just he makes every way in which you want to be you want to be good difficult, just like Pharaoh did to the Israelites, right? Okay, fine. You want to go make a sacrifice to your God? Fine, you can do that. You cannot bring your wife and children. Oh, and you cannot bring your cattle. You know, oh, that you, you need to sacrifice. You need, yeah, it's yeah. like oh, you okay, we. You can go, but you can't. You can't do anything in which you can't bring anything in which you need yeah. to to do the mission. Mm-hmm. You know, and so like yes, you can go a three days journey, but you can't take any water right. into the desert. Right. So I mean, th- but this is this is his game, right? This is what he tries to do. Is like he allows you to still. And the flip side of that is it, it's actually for for your for your holiness because what you have to do is you now have to rely on God even more. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's true that in exorcisms, exorcists have have got Satan to admit that he even knows that all the things he does ultimately work towards a person's sanctification if they cooperate with grace, mm-hmm. right? That he is the instrument of their salvation, like, uh, you know, not the instrument of their salvation, uh, like, cr- obviously Christ is the instrument of our salvation, but that he is the instrument of the sanctification of the person, right? It is... Mm-hmm. His action, he is the fire by which they're being purified, mm-hmm. um, and he even knows it and hates that. Right, but he, but he still, he cannot help himself. Right, he must tempt. Like he has, he has made his choice about who he is and what he does. Right, yeah. He talks about also how when you're uh, doing some good actions. What the devil, inter- he tries to interfere with the performance and frustrates it, either by presenting it difficult, uh, exciting oppositions on the parts of, of other people, so bringing in other people to try to, like, distract you, uh-huh. um, or or creating, like, repugnances in yourself, like, uh, there's just no way, just can't, like, not me. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just creates a lot of doubt, right? He... Uh, in, in these things like this is what kills the magnanimous soul right we're, we're, we're made for for greatness and really the heroic man as a father who's who who takes his vocation seriously and as a husband as you take your vocation seriously to go out and work for for your family and to come home and to love your wife as christ loves the church and to uh you know be a glimpse of the divine love to your to your uh, children and to raise them up to be holy saints. This is a heroic calling. This is something mm. that is that is uh, not to be taken lightly. It is something that we should uh, should be at the forefront of every single day when we wake up. Like this is my calling. This is how I'm going to get to heaven. This is the path on which the Lord has seen it fit for me to get to heaven, mm-hmm. which is something obviously you take very seriously. Right. And so, what does the devil do? He, he creates this doubt, like, oh, you can't do this. Yeah. We forget, like, the dignity of the call we have. Like, as a father, the, like, think about the profound dignity. First of all, to share, the, share a name with God, mm-hmm. the Father, right? Mm-hmm. That we would be, stand in his place, okay? It's, it's just incredible. He gives us his children, you know, like, because, like, the children that you're raising— um, you know, by, they come from you biologically, but they're his children. And he gave them, to, he gave his children to you to raise. Like, it's incredible. The profound dignity. That's in, so, and we just forget that about the, like, honor that is in the calling that we live out every day. And when we do because it well. it's mundane. Yeah, and when we do it well, it honors our, our Heavenly Father. Yes, absolutely. And there's profound grace in it. Okay, so we're out of time on Catholic Radio. Go check us out on the CatholicCommandShow.com. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. And cheers to Jesus. So he, he one of the last things he, t- he talks about here is he says, like, often happens when the Holy Spirit puts some good thought into our mind, the devil steals it away, playing off a cheat upon us and suggesting in it, it instead another, which, although perhaps it 
it may not be in in and of itself bad, nevertheless does us much harm since it deprives us of the good impulse and the peace resulting from the first thought which came from God. This is something that like really struck me because I think that in this day and age we we use the word discernment inappropriately. Hmm. And we can use that time to say like, so this is just my, here, here's my take on this. This is not Catholic teaching. This is not what Father Luis is saying, but like, here's my thought on, on this and on discernment in and up like in, in general is that it, if you have a, a strong prayer life, and when I say a strong prayer life, meaning like a consistent prayer life in which you are every day in uh, communication and and in a conversation with our Lord in prayer, and you're living a sacramental life, mm-hmm. and uh, you're doing the pre- you know you believe in the precepts of the church. That discernment is is something that ha- that should happen pretty fast, for the most part. That because listen, this is a good thing. This is something that the Lord has you know put before me. I I'm going to act on this. Act, it's kind of like St. Joan of Arc, you know, saying act and God will act. Yeah. I think that a lot of times what we do is we use the word discernment and we say like, oh, I'm going to go try to prudently discern this. Mm-hmm. And really what it is, is either you're either fearful, you don't want to do it. Um, you don't think God is really calling you to that um, out of fear of, of, of something. Um, or you just don't want to, like, you think it's going to hurt. Like, it's gonna, it's not going to be fun. Right. I do think that sometimes we use the word discernment when we're really talking about moral choices, and there is no discerning in moral choices. Right, okay? yeah. You just need to have the gumption. You need to be man enough to be a moral person mm-hmm. and to make the choice that you know is right. Right. Because sometimes it's like we're afraid. Fear comes back into it, right? Mm-hmm. And so we we act like it's a discernment process when really we're just cow, cowing, you know, and trying to work up the courage to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Discernment can be difficult uh, when we're discerning or trying to choose between two goods. That's when discernment. That's that's when discernment really comes into play. You know, when you're looking at marriage, yeah. um, one one young lady versus versus another, maybe another option, or another direction, or maybe another a different young person. <laughs> it's a good joking. thing the radio portion of the show is <laughs> over. You know, so we have two goods. That can be really really difficult to do. Sure. To follow the Lord's will. I, I honestly, though, think that a lot of times we we sometimes get worked up about it a little too much. Um, not that it, we shouldn't take it seriously. That's mm-hmm. not what I'm at right. all what I'm saying. But um, so, there are so, so, there is at least a certain personality type out there who will just just like crushingly disable themselves because they are so worried about maybe making the wrong. It's like. Hey, if you do this in good faith, you're we're, first of all we're choosing between two goods here, right? Okay, um, so the great news is there's not a wrong choice. Uh, you know, it, it, yeah. you know, if we're talking about like, hey, should I marry this woman or this woman? Okay, hey. not like you ever just get to choose like that. Okay, I get it, but um, you know, the value of two of the, both of these women. Are in you know, they both have an infinite, infinite value in the Lord's eyes? Of course. Okay, so you, it's not like one of it has more goodness than the other. Okay, God might prefer one or the other, but if you, if I, I, my opinion, if you make that choice in good faith, it pleases the Lord, and it pleases the Lord. He is going to bless the choice. Mm-hmm. Okay, he might have blessed one a little bit more than the other, but um, it's not like you're going to be, he's going to be mad at you, you know, or, you know, he's going to say like, he's going to punish you for it if you've made good. So you know, sometimes I think people can really just, they can get arrested in that discernment process, but no discerning is not moral choices, not discernment. Right. I just find it interesting that again, I we've talked about this before, but, the Lord wants so much to, to to give us so much. And there's so many times where we close the door on that for one reason or another. Mm-hmm. And that we're going to have to, you know, 
for, for that I've done and those things that I have failed to do, we're going to have to answer for to that someday. Sure. And a lot of times uh, it could be the work of the devil of the things that you didn't do is because you, you recognized this is a good, this is what, you know, I've been in communion with the Lord through prayer and in the sacramental life. This is what he puts in front of me. I will go and do this because this is good. And uh, instead of doing that, you say, I don't know, let me think about it a little bit. Let me go mm-hmm. pray on that a little bit. Right. Well, it's like, actually, if you have a prayer life. Um, Hopefully you just know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is, I mean, yeah. But, but it's, Gen- this is, is a general broad, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when I read this about what you read, it, how it often happens is the Holy Spirit puts some good thought into our mind and the devil steals it away, playing off as a cheat and suggesting another. To me, that just really makes me think of distraction, which happens to me all the time. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Which is just, I think, it's j- I think that people have always had problems. It's always been a struggle with distraction and prayer, especially. But I think I'm, it's my opinion that it's gotten magnificently worse um, because of the digital age in which we live. Our attention, we're just not used to holding our attention on one thing for very long because um, there is just so many next things to move on to constantly, mm-hmm. right? People cannot even stand in an elevator without pulling out their phones for God knows what reason. Mm-hmm. They don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, when people get when you get into an elevator, I feel it too, right? Like the, oh, I'm just standing here for two seconds. Or the grocery store. Yeah, or like, yeah, exactly. I have nothing to do for literally, I mean, like in the elevator, sometimes it is actually 10 seconds. And it's just too much. I can't handle it. I have to do so. Like I need stimulus. Mm-hmm. Okay, and if that's the habit that we have, it's no wonder that we're so distracted in prayer, right? Right. Um, and so we we really have to think about that. And the habits we make. Um, technology is very awesome. It's very cool, but it's also like really terrible. Um, I mean, like it can, it can be terrible, sort of in like an awe way. I mean, it is. It's like. There's a lot of terror and awe when it comes to technology. Yeah. Um, and so we have to wisely use it in our lives because um, otherwise the essential, the essential thing in our life, which is, our, which is prayer, mm-hmm. will struggle and will suffer, right? Yeah. So uh, obviously if you're a, a, of the temperament as well of like always worried about the devil playing a role in your life, don't allow that to happen either. Listen, if you fall, go to confession immediately. Have you ever thought about also, I think uh, Alphonsus Liguori talks about this, and I, I have not looked it up. I just, I heard somebody say this, so I don't know. Is it on YouTube? I don't know. I don't even remember. Those guys, you know, they never lie. They never lie, yeah. Uh, but I've thought about this before, like. For such a time as this. this. <laughs> um, that I wonder if, like, you have like a certain amount of days in this world, um, like in the state of mortal sin, and then after that, God's just like, going to cash like, you out, and then it's like your time is up. I would not, I would not put my chips in that corner. I, I mean, I wouldn't either. But, but like, it's just. A, I do think you have a certain number of days in the world, but I don't think it's like all right when you're born. It's like all right, I will give you a thousand days in mortal sin. And if you use them up, I'm, I'm checking you out. You know, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think that's the way. I, but I think uh, Saint Alphonsus Liguori talks about this. Who's the moral doctor of the, the church? Yeah. But I have not done n- any research on it. But it is interesting to think about how, like, I don't know. Like, it like, is interesting to think about. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, by contrast, if you. And I know, I know this doesn't completely disprove the theory, but if you never committed a mortal sin, would you live forever? No. Obviously not. No. Uh, it doesn't disprove, it, like, just say that is a theory. I'm not saying right. that you're saying it's a theory, but if we just right. said that, and certainly neither one of us can say that actually Alphonsus Liguori said <laughs> this is a theory, <laughs> but let's just say it was a theory. 
the the fact that you don't live forever doesn't disprove it, but yeah, it's not my theory. It's not mine either. But it is an interesting thought. Anyway, uh, you're in the state of mortal sin. Run to confession. Just the next day, tomorrow, or drive the speed just limit. There. Drive the speed limit there. Hop to confession. I don't know whatever mode of transportation that needs to happen. Get mm-hmm. to confession. Yeah. Uh, every sinner is one confession away from being a saint. Um and you know don't fret i mean our, our mother is there for us right she she crushed she's already crushed the head of satan you know um one of the thing i want to bring up about the ways that the devil prevents our spiritual advancement okay is dejection mm-hmm. um when you read the saints uh, there's a common theme that they have an attitude of when when they when they realize they have made a fault however small or large they don't they refuse to let themselves get upset at like um worried about it okay the the trick is to yes admit and quickly seek forgiveness and then carry on in joy well don't you see this in a natural way to, as well right even with your spouse you mess up right instead of like trying to fight like saying sorry or acting like nothing is wrong you know just admit to her quickly like hey i messed up i'm really sorry Mm -hmm. and then like you know forgiveness happens and then you you move on then like then you like hopefully hopefully you can do that um some certain spouses might be more vindictive than others right but the lord is not that's the thing about the lord right um and so the devil really, really, really wants you, and there is um, a good, healthy Catholic guilt. I'm not, I'm not denying that, but yeah, I, I mean, I definitely think there's more shame in the like. Shame should be a, a bigger thing in this world. Oh, certainly, because the, I mean, the when you look at the world, is pretty shameless, right? You know, I think um, shame is it, is a good thing. Y- yes, correct. A healthy shame is a healthy good shame, thing. Um, but once you have been forgiven. If you continue to carry, you know, it's the Lord has forgiven you. You know, he talks about your sins, putting them as as far as the east is from the west. Yeah, which is a circle. Which is a philosophical infinite, you know, it's like they almost like they don't exist anymore. Um, So this is an important attitude to have. And it's something that the saints talk about where, yes, you you make a mistake. Um, Seek repentance for your mistake. Big ones, small ones. And then today, I and begin then, again. And then, um, because to carry on a, like, almost like, oh, I'm still carrying on, like, a woundedness or whatever, is in in a way to deny the mercy of Christ. You know, almost as if his mercy wasn't enough for you, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, it's it's actually an affront to the love of God when we do that. And so, we need to, we need to have joy in his, and just an utter trust in his mercy. Um, that's what I love about devotion to the divine mercy, saying the divine mercy chaplet, um, reading uh, St. Faustina's diary, where you just really get a good sense of just this abandonment. Mm-hmm. Is this, this trust in his mercy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when you do that, like when you just even ponder it for a minute, there is a joy that you will find in your soul. Mm-hmm that it's a ah oh man like the lord is so good yeah because like man i shouldn't i don't deserve this mercy but it is just there for you all mm-hmm. the time yeah which is beautiful indeed anything else no one of the lord's team the winning side so raise your class cheers to jesus